So today, I don't have a radio for you. I have this Heathkit signal generator. Now, what is a signal generator? Well, it helps you align and troubleshoot a radio. Now, I don't particularly collect test equipment, but I seem to have a bit of a collection going. Uh, and I've got a couple more things here and there. Anyway, so the way that this basically works is it's basically the front side of a radio almost. Um, it's essentially just an oscillator and you can adjust it by tuning it like this. And you have either a, an RF output or an audio output as well. And it's basically, like I said, it's just an oscillator. And what it does is it helps you figure out what stage of the radio is working. So if you put in a signal of, uh, I don't know, a thousand kilohertz, right? And you tune the radio to a thousand, you'll hear a little bit of a, a whistle or a, you know, a, a tone, right? If you set the thing over to 600, same deal. Now, if you set it to 455 or 456 in some cases, you should basically get a signal right through the chain of the radio, the circuit. And uh, I can show you an example. So I have this schematic here. This is just a, I don't even know what it was, a radio I was working on that I could never get to work. Uh, you know, sometimes you can't win at all of them. Anyway, um, what ends up happening here is you have the signal coming through the antenna and it goes through the tubes here to the plate through the first IF transformer over here to the grid and then the plate you know, getting amplified. You got it going through this IF transformer and so on. Now, it is a little more complicated because here you have the oscillator, the internal oscillator, which then mixes with the signal and it, it essentially what it does is it converts the incoming signal into something that the radio can understand. Now, this being a super heterodyne radio, all it does is pick up 455. It's tuned to be you know, the perfect vehicle for receiving 455 kilohertz. And what it's doing is it's then converting that signal and bringing it over to 455 through the oscillator here, essentially. Um, a little more complicated, but what it then does is amplifies that signal over and over. You know, in this case, there's only really two stages, and then this is a diode here, and then it goes to the output and you get that amplified 455 signal out of the radio. By using this signal generator, you're injecting 455 anywhere. I mean, you can do it, you can do it here. You can do it here on one of the grids. You can even do it here. Uh, well, you can't really do it past this actually because that would then need to be an audio signal rather than a, an RF signal because it's already converted to audio by around this stage. So, uh, okay, so you can do it anywhere between here and here. And what that does is allows you to troubleshoot what's not working. Maybe the oscillator's working, but you're not getting a, any reception. Well, maybe this tube is bad. So if this tube is not working, you'd hear the signal here, but you wouldn't hear it here. And, and so on. So it, it's a very useful troubleshooting tool. And I have one already. I have this little ICO up here, which is great. I love it. But now I have another one. And like any old radio, this being from the 1950s, it needs to be overhauled. And it's just like working on a radio. So that's what we're going to do. So here's what the inside of a signal generator looks like. Kind of cool. You got your power transformer over here on the left. This should be your oscillator tube. Uh, I don't know, 12AV7, something like that. 12AU7. Okay, close enough. And then you got one other tube over here. You've got, looks like an audio transformer. 
your switch is down there. Now let's take a look underneath. Has it been worked on? No, it has not. You've got your selenium rectifier. And you've got a couple not very good capacitors. And an electrolytic, which needs to be replaced. Okay, so this is what it looks like. You can see some of the soldering is not the best, although it's also not the worst, so we can't really complain. The selenium rectifier is probably workable, kind of. Uh, what is this capacitor? 20 and 20 at 150. Mighty midget. Uh, don't think they can say the word midget anymore. Just recapping and then, I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the selenium. I may leave it. These disc capacitors on the line, I don't love that, but they should be safety capacitors down there. You can kind of see them. The biggest ones to change are these mica mold what is it? Mike Mold Tropic Cap. Oh, that sounds like a vacation. And the electrolytics. I mean, this is actually. Is it leaking? I can't tell. Maybe. No, not well. It's a little bit bulged, but it's not too bad. But if you get, uh, if that's bad, you'll get hum in the signal. So you, you might as well change it. Okay, I changed the capacitors, changed these two over here, electrolytics and the two uh, paper ones. I'm not going to change the discs, even the across the line capacitors. I know, I know you're, you're going to say something. Uh, the reason I'm not going to bother is because this is not a radio. It's not going to be on for hours. It might be on for 15 minutes, 20 minutes here and there. I would consider changing the selenium depending on the output voltage. Oh, this is not good. So if the output voltage is too low, then I'll change the selenium rectifier, but you know, these tend to work for at least a little while. And it might be good enough to at least get me by. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and power this on. I don't know what we're gonna get, but I have the meter here set so we can see. Let's see. Okay, we're getting about 130 volts out of the selenium DC. No major issues. So my guess is it probably works. So the next thing here is we will um, connect a radio, actually. And uh, I don't know what project am I working on right now that I can do that too. Basically connect a radio and just, uh, you know, see what happens. Okay, I've got this radio playing, right? I'm going to go off frequency a little, and we're going to use the signal generator. I've got it on the dim bulb. There you go. So the signal generator literally just generates a signal. Now I'm missing the dial pointer here. Sorry, missing the dial pointer here, so I can't really do anything about that. But uh, um, you know, gives you an idea. So if you want to align the radio, which eventually I'll do in this, uh, that's exactly what will um, will happen. That noise will come through, and I can make my adjustments. You probably see me do it on my other one, and um, yeah. So that's why you have a signal generator.